Hi, in this video you're going to learn how to build websites and design them using the tool called Vue.js. Now Vue is a web framework that is a programmer's tool to develop front-end systems. It competes with React and Angular. And so we're going to make this work better by bringing in a guest today. So Gwen Faraday is literally a professional. She develops websites for a living and uses this tool every day. And so Vue has a great reputation as being both powerful and easy to use and easy to learn. So we're going to find out if it's up to the hype or not. So we're going to compare it against uh, React and Angular and see how well they work. Now, I would also like you to take a look at Gwen's channel. So I'm going to put in a link to the channel that she, she produces, which has got lots of other tutorials that are very similar to this. So if you find this useful, make sure you stop on over to see Gwen at YouTube at her channel. This video is made with the assumption that you know at least some JavaScript and have at least looked at a JavaScript framework before or know what it does. If you've tried out Angular or React before and you're wondering where Vue fits in and how it compares, then this video is right for you. So here are the mockups for what this project is going to look like. I'm not at all worried about styling because this video is just about the functionality of Vue.js, so it's not going to be that pretty. It's basically a study card application where you have decks and you can click on a deck and then you can go through cards one at a time. This will cover the basics of using Vue.js as well as the Vue router and Vue.x all together, so you get a good idea of the Vue ecosystem. And while I'm building, I'm going to talk about some of the differences between Vue.js and other popular front-end frameworks like React and Angular. All of the most popular frameworks have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of downloads and GitHub stars and thousands of companies using them. So adoption is not really an issue since there are everything from startups to enterprise corporations using React, Angular, Vue, and several other frameworks. The real differences worth comparing in frameworks are the design decisions and developer experience from using the framework. And that's what I'm going to talk about today, so you can get a good idea of what it would look like to develop a Vue application. Vue is very much a middle-of-the-road framework. It's flexible to be used as a small library like React, via a CDN and a simple web page, or more like a full-fledged framework like Angular, what they call batteries included frameworks, where you get many features out of the box without having to install and configure them yourself. So let's look at the getting started. And by the way, I am on the version 3 docs, which are at v3.vjs.org. I'll go to the installation over here. And if I scroll down, you can see the different ways of installing Vue.js. You can do via CDN or NPM, and the recommended most popular way is via the Vue CLI, which like you can see, this is the official CLI. It is created and maintained by the Vue.js core team. And the purpose is for bootstrapping your application but you can also use it for adding and managing dependencies at any time during your application development. It serves sort of the same purpose as the Angular CLI or create a React app, but there are some important differences. If you don't already have the Vue CLI installed, you can go ahead and do npm install Vue CLI globally, and this will install the latest version of the Vue CLI. I already have it installed. You can do Vue version. Vue CLI 4.5.6. This is not the same version as Vue itself. This is just the CLI version. So if I do Vue create, I can use this to spin up a new application. And I'm just going to call this quiz app. Now you can see right away, it gives me some different options. These top options, demo, prod, and V3 demos are custom options that I created myself. But the options below it are what you will see if you install a fresh copy of the Vue CLI. Right now, because Vue 3 just came out in version 3.0, so they let you choose between starting with Vue 2 or Vue 3, 
and you can also manually select features. Now this is different from something like the Create React app, which sets up the entire application for you with React, and then you can install whatever you want and configure it yourself after you bootstrap the application. So I'm gonna show you how configurable the Vue CLI is by choosing manually select features, press enter. And now I can choose between any of the features on this list. Vue 3 has been completely rebuilt in TypeScript. It has excellent TypeScript support, but I will not be going over that in this video. I can choose progressive web app support, Vue router, Vue X, which are the official routing and state management packages of Vue. So if you're used to something like React, you might be familiar with React router, or instead of Vue X, you might be using Redux or Mob X. The difference is those are all third-party applications that you can use with React, whereas the router and Vue X are tools built specifically for Vue that you can choose to use or not use. Now, Angular comes with routing and state management built in, but it's not a separate library. So Vue gives you a little bit more flexibility. I know if you want to in Angular, you can set up your own libraries instead of using the default ones, but Vue is different because it lets you upfront choose if you want it or not. So I'm gonna select CSS preprocessor because I pretty much always use SAS in case I wanna use it. And then I'll go ahead and choose unit testing and end-to-end -end testing so you can see how it's set up. By the way, I'm selecting these bubbles by pressing the space bar. So I'll hit enter there, choose version three, use history mode for router. This is instead of a hash router, I'll select yes. CSS preprocessor, I'll go with the standard SAS with Dart SAS. ESLint error prevention only, I'll do the standard config. It's asking me if I want to lint on save. I'll say sure. What do I want for unit testing Jest? Do I want Cypress Nightwatch or this is a new one, WebDriver IO. I always go with Nightwatch. It's not necessarily better, but it's just what I'm used to, I guess. Select a browser for those end-to-end -end tests. Chrome and Firefox are good. It's asking me where I want my configuration files and I like them outside of the package.json, so I'll put those in dedicated config files. It's asking me if I want to save this as a preset. You remember at the beginning I had those extra options because I had saved my own presets, so I don't need another one, I'll just leave this at no. And now it is creating and setting up my project for me. It's going to set up view and all of the packages and configuration options that I selected as well as start a git project and do an npm install. The Vue CLI is really one of my favorite things about Vue, just because it's so flexible and configurable and I don't have to worry about setting up those same packages over and over again every single time I start an application. Okay, it's done and now I'm going to go into the directory it created and take a look at the code. This is a pretty standard JavaScript application. There are my configuration files here, a package.json and a basic readme with instructions for how to build and run my application. In the package.json, it gives me a set of commands here. So serve, build, test, lint. And you'll notice there's this command, which is view CLI service. And this is a view package that handles a lot of things going on under the hood in my application, like running a development server and doing builds for production. Now, if you know Create React App, this is very similar to Create React App, except you'll notice that there is no eject here. So there is no concept of ejecting with the Vue CLI. And unlike Create React App, you can actually configure a vue.config.js file and in here you can add webpack options. So even though this Vue CLI service is handling all of the webpack build and stuff, if you want to change or overwrite anything, you can always put it in this view config file. It's nice to always have that option without having to worry about ejecting. That's the basic setup of a view application as far as configuration. For the folders, you can see it set up a test folder. It will put end-to-end -end tests here. I'm not gonna to talk too much about testing, but it does set up a lot of things. So 
that you will have a test that runs out of the box as soon as you run this unit test or end-to-end -end test command. And then there's the source directory. Now in the source directory, you basically get this chainable API from view, this create app. You pass it in an app component, this app.view component, and then you can chain other plugins and components onto it. So the best way to handle this component is actually to set it equal to a variable here and then chain all of these other options on. Because inevitably, as you're building an application, you will be adding third-party components and modules. So I could just do app.use, the same thing again, and then use app.mount as well. Let's say I want to add bootstrap view components or something like that here. I can just do it here after I create this app variable and before I mount the application to the DOM. You can see this in any single page application framework. The hashtag app means mount our view application inside an HTML element, usually a div with the ID of app. And you can see this in the public directory in the index.html. Here's the div with app and all of the bundled JavaScript from your view files will be injected here. When you're building for production, you can just run this build command and it will generate a dist folder with all of your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in it. So the entry point for our application is this app.view component. So you'll see the breakdown of a component. Let me fold these. Add a script tag here. And you can see that at the top, you can put your template and then you put your JavaScript in the script tag that interacts with that template. And then if you want to include styling in the same file, you can put it here. Of course, just like any other framework, you don't have to include styling inside of each component. You can have a separate styling directory here. So usually what I do in my projects is create a folder here called SAS and then create all my styles in my .sass files inside of this folder. I find it much easier to maintain and share styles if they're in a separate folder. Although it's also convenient to have the option to put styles in the same file with your components especially if they are very specific to that component. You can use any language you want here. So because I chose SAS when I set up the Vue CLI, select lang equals SCSS here, and it will give me the SAS style with the curly braces. I could also do SAS SASS, which will be indented syntax SAS. So I'd have to change my code around here if I wanted to do that. And then I also have the option here of saying these are scoped styles. That means that these styles will only affect this component, this app.view component. It won't affect any DOM element in any other component. This is kind of like namespacing your styles using a wrapper class. And it's very convenient that Vue.js gives me this option here. There are other options associated with styles that you can look into. But this is the basic premise of Vue is to keep it very flexible while also setting things up for you out of the box. So I'm going to code fold the styles now and let's look at the template. You can see that here you can use regular HTML tags and attributes. And there are also some custom tags here called view components. Now, in this case, these router link components come from view router that was installed, but you can also see you can create your own components here as well and include them in your template just as you would any other tag. I'm going to run this application so you can see a little bit more clearly the different parts of it. So I'll do npm run serve to run the development server. It takes a second to spin up for the first time, although this did speed up quite a bit moving from view version two to version three. I can go to the browser in localhost 8080, and this is the boilerplate application. And any framework will set up something similar to this. Because I added the router, you can see there are two routes here. 
one is slash about and this is just the regular forward slash the home page. This is all just static content that I added that I can just get rid of. So you can see that these links at the top, they actually come from this app component, main component of our whole application. So every other component will be rendered inside of this app component. How are they rendered inside of the app component? In the case of our individual pages or the views, they are displayed from the router. So you can see there's two different ones. There's the home page and there's the about page. They're both at their own routes, but you notice that if we're on the home page or the about page, it's always showing this nav and then it has the page content below. And that's because other pages, any page attached to the router will display inside this router view. Basically it will replace this router view and be displayed below this top navigation here. Of course, you can do nested routes and child routes and put router views in child components. I'm not going to go into that really right now, but that's basically how you display your pages. They display wherever you put this router view here. So if I added another element below this, and now you can see I have the top nav, I have the about page, and then I have the div that I just added below the contents of the about page. So if you're wondering where the contents of the about page come from, in your router slash index.js file, you can see each route has a component associated with it. And that is the component that will display if you go to that page. Now on the about page, it's referencing this component about.view. This is a little bit more complicated of a setup that's just there for demonstration purposes, but you can do and that works just as well. And then we can see these components inside the views folder. And this folder is really for any component that you are going to connect directly to the router. So you can see that is the about component that displays that text we saw on the page. And then the home component has the view image. You can see this view image at the top here, and then it has all of this text below it, but it's not in this component directly. So actually you can see this hello world, obviously that is not an HTML tag. And you can see down here, this hello world is actually a component that's being imported from the components folder. Now the components folder is for components. They also have the dot view extension at the end, just like views. But the difference is that components are not attached to the router. It's just a way for you to break apart your views into smaller reusable components like this hello world component. So I'm going to click on this and now you can see all of the rest of the text from that page is inside of this component. So I'm going to start updating these components a little bit and you can see a little bit of view development as I do that. First, I'm going to come to the home page and I'm going to get rid of that component that I'm importing. And here I'm just going to say, Welcome to my study card app. And now on the about page, I'm actually going to change the name of this component because I'm going to change it to Dex because I want to display Dex on there on that page. So I'm going to call it Dex.view. And now I have to rename the component inside of the router here and I can come here and say about and just replace that with dex and come to line 12 and also replace this with dex. So now I'll be using this component called dex for my quiz app or my study card app, but I need to change this in one more place as well. So I need to come to my app.view component and instead of linking this to about, I need to link it to dex and then call this the dex route. 
Let's look at that in the browser and it works just fine. I'll get rid of my hello at the bottom in here. And now in my dex.view, I want to use some kind of card element and repeat over it here. So to do that, I'm going to grab a CSS library. I'll just use the standard bootstrap library. So Vue.js actually has a lot of built-in component libraries. My favorite one is Vuetify. You can see it's a material design framework. If I go to getting started and look at the components, there are a ton of built-in components that I can use out of the box, like this card one that I would want to use for this component. It basically gives me a view custom component from the library. All I have to do is use vCard set whatever options I want, and it creates this card for me. So these libraries are really convenient. Unfortunately, most of them do not work with Vue 3 yet. It's the end of October right now, so probably November, December, January, we'll see a lot more support for Vue 3. But since it just came out a few weeks ago, they haven't fully had time to update yet. So I'll just be using Bootstrap 4, and all I need is the CSS to start using it. I don't even need to do an npm install. I'll just copy this link tag to the clipboard. And then I can come into my index.html file. And I will paste bootstrap in there. And now I should be able to use regular HTML tags with some styling that references the bootstrap classes. So let me look in here for the specific bootstrap component that I want to use in cards. This is just some basic card here. That's fine. I'll just copy paste this and paste it in here. For the image here, I'm going to replace it with an image of me, actually one of the original images of when I was learning to code. I'm going to replace this with study deck and I'll put the number here. I'll just hard code that for a second. I'll leave the description alone here and then the button, I'm going to change this to view deck. This class I'll also go ahead and change to dex. If I look at the quiz app now, you can see I have the awkwardly placed card here on the dex page. And I'm basically going to use this to demonstrate how to use variables in data in Vue.js. So what if I want many of these cards in a row across the screen and then also in multiple rows? To do that, I'm going to create a script tag down here and create a data method and then return an object from that method. Any key that I create in this object that I'm returning, Vue turns it into a variable that I can use anywhere in my JavaScript or template of this component. And I can also pass it to other components, which we're going to look at a little bit later. For example, I could say title is Python study. And then here on line six, I can come here to study deck and insert a variable and just type title. And now anything that I put inside of these double curly braces will be parsed as JavaScript instead of just plain text. So that means when Vue sees this word title, it's not in quotes, so Vue's going to know, okay, this is a variable. So I need to look in my variables down here for the variable name title, and then it will render the string that we want. And you can see that it did indeed render it. If you've used any templating language before, this double curly brace or double mustache syntax will look familiar to you. 
It's pretty similar to any other templating language. In React, they use single curly brace because it is JSX, which is a meta language that they created. And by the way, if you want to, you can use JSX inside your view templates as well. That is built in. You can just set that in your template here. It's similar to how you set the language as SAS here, and then you can write using SAS inside of your style tag. So it's the same. With the template, you can set it as pug or JSX or whatever you want, or you can just use the standard default view templates here. I've always just used the default, but I do know some people who prefer to use JSX even inside of Vue. It's nice that Vue gives you that flexibility. So let's talk about loops here. And first, I'm going to create just some dummy information here. I'm going to say dex, and then this variable will be an array of objects. And I'm just going to create a couple of these for demonstration. I'll say Python study and a description. So now we have an array with three items. How do I loop through this data and show it on the page? So if I go back to my template here, I have these cards, which is actually what I want to loop through. The way that Vue chooses to handle interactions between the JavaScript and the template here is with directives. And this concept is taken directly from Angular. So here I have V4. So v4 is a directive, which is basically a for loop in your template. And what I'm going to do is create this just like any other HTML attribute. And I can say for deck in dex. Just like a for in loop, this will loop through the dex variable down here. And then I'll have access to each deck in the deck variable. And I don't have to type in var deck or anything like that. Now, one thing I am going to do here is wrap it in parentheses, though, because Vue also gives me the index in the loop with the i variable. Because I'm looping through these DOM elements, there is one special thing that Vue wants me to do, and that is create a key prop here. Basically, Vue uses this key as a way to have a unique identifier for looped items in the DOM. So I'm not going to get too much into that. If you are familiar with other frameworks, you will have probably seen this before. And I'm going to pass in this i variable that I created over here. The only problem is it's still complaining about this. You can see it's still complaining about the key here. And that's because right now it's just treating this as a regular HTML attribute. So this i will be a string then how can I pass in a variable here instead of a, instead of a string? Because I want this i to refer to the i variable, this index. And view allows me to do that by modifying an attribute and saying vbind colon. And see how the linting error went away? So this means that I'm telling view basically parse this i as a variable instead of a regular string. And you'll see this a lot with the shorthand. So you can actually write vbind colon as just colon. And that's the same thing. So you'll usually see it written this way in applications instead of writing out the whole vbind. Vue has a couple of convenient shorthands like that. And so now I'm looping through all of these decks and you can see it's displayed multiple times here. And the reason why it's stacked in columns is because of my styling and my bootstrap styling that I have. So I'm going to fix that real quick. So I added a little bit of styling from bootstrap just to get these to display in a row and give them a little bit of margin in between. So now I want to display the specific data on each one of these items. So let me start off with the title and description. Here I have the title variable from data down here. 
but now I want the name variable from the deck. So I have the deck variable here, which is an object, and all I have to do is do deck.name, and I can do deck dot description and now for each card it shows the custom data here now if I wanted to change the number here so it wasn't just one every time I can just use the index here you can put double curly braces back to back it doesn't matter I'll put the I inside and it shows the index of course, I don't really want it being zero ever because humans don't read in zero-based indexing, so I'm going to do plus one here, and that looks good. Another thing that I'm going to update is here where it says view deck. I want to navigate to a page that will be specific for whatever study deck I'm clicking on. So instead of using a regular anchor tag here, because I have view router, there's actually that same router link that I am using in the main nav up top. And I can use router link two equals. And here I could vbind this and pass in an object if I wanted to, but I'm just going to pass in a regular route. I'm gonna say I wanna to go to dex slash whatever the deck ID was. And actually I will need to use vbind or the shorthand for vbind here because I want this parsed as JavaScript so I can pass in the index variable for the deck. So it will be decks slash the index of that deck. That will be the URL. And then I can use this index as a lookup on the page that I'm going to. So how do I do that? First, I need to connect this to the router because I don't actually have any route that is index slash ID right now. So let me go to the router. And actually this hello world component, I'm not gonna be using, so I'll just go ahead and delete that. And now in the router, I'm gonna create another path here and say dex slash and then colon ID and that will be a param that I can grab inside of my component. The name, I'm gonna use the same convention of capital, and I'm gonna call this deck. The component I still need to create, that will also be deck. And now I need to import that deck component. I'm still gonna put it in views because it is connected to my router, so it is its own view. So let me create that new file. I'll create deck.view. And so in Angular, when you wanna create new components, you just kind of run a command with the CLI and it creates a new component and the files that go along with it. Well, in view, you create your own components. The view CLI does not create components for you. But there are community and official plugins for code editors to help out with things like highlighting and snippets. And so here in the file, because I have these plugins installed, I have all of these snippets already. So I'm just gonna click on the first one and see it creates my view component out of the box. If you wanna see which plugins I have, you can see I have this view VS Code snippet by Sarah Drasner. And then I also have one called Vter, which is the official view plugin. You can see almost 6 million downloads. And this is where my syntax highlighting and some autocomplete and other features come in. And it also has really good TypeScript support and it is updated to work with Vue 3. So those are the two view plugins that I use. So now in deck here, I'm just gonna put some text. And how do I get to this deck component? From decks, I know I have this link that will take me to slash decks slash ID. So let's see if that goes to the right component. 
And I have an error that says I have an invalid end tag. Looks like I forgot to put a router link in here to change the A tag. And now if I hover over view deck, you can see in the corner at the bottom left of my screen, it shows me the correct link, so deck slash zero. If I click on that, you can see it took me to the deck page. What's the best way to get the information for a particular deck inside of this component? Right now, we only have this decks array inside of the decks component. Well, a good way to share data between components is to move this to view X. So I'm going to do that real quick. Inside this store folder, I have an index.js file. And you can see I have state mutations, actions, and modules. How it works is basically you call an action that can do any type of synchronous or asynchronous activity. And then you can call a mutation. And inside the mutation, you run a JavaScript function that's purpose is to update the state. And then your components will watch for updates in this state object. And the state can be subscribed to by as many components as you want. So this is a concept of having a global state object, much like what Redux does, except view mutates state and Redux does not. But both of them allow for developer tools and scrubbing through the history of your state changes. It's just two different implementations that handle global state object a little bit differently. So on state here, I'm going to create a dex variable just like I had in that component. And now how do I subscribe to these dex inside of the component? So back in my dex.view, I actually already have access to the store and the state on my context here. So I can do this dot store dot state and you can see it was already trying to autocomplete dex there. So why do I have this.store here? That's because of dependency injection. Angular also uses dependency injection. And in view, it comes from here in this case. So this dot use store and dot use router. I actually have access to these objects inside every single component in my application because of dependency injection. So for example, I also have access to this dot router, etc. So now I have dex here being looped through directly off my store. So the dex variable comes from my store and let's see if that works. So you can see it loops through the same way. Now I would show you this in the Vue.js dev tools, which by the way, there's a browser plugin for Vue specific dev tools. But right now, you can only traverse the component tree with Vue DevTools. So you can see, I can see my Dex component. And I can also see all of the data that's available on my Dex component. This is the variable we created, and these objects are coming from the Vuex store. Now, if you were using version 2, you would notice a lot of other tabs here for routing and Vuex, events, and other things that you can do inside of the Vue DevTools, but the Vue DevTools haven't been fully updated yet to work with Vue version 3. Now, this is a bit different from the React DevTools because in React, you only have this in the DevTools. Whereas in Vue, generally, you have not just the component tree and the data and props on component, but you also have Vue X and Vue Router because those libraries are core libraries that are created and maintained by the Vue.js team. Instead of having separate dev tools for each library, it's just all packaged in one. So now I want to go to an individual deck page. So this is dex slash zero here. And I want to display the deck information on the page. Well, I need to get that deck object out of the store in this case. If you had it in a database, you'd be making an API call for that, usually from a Vuex action. But let me go to the store here. So here, how do I get the object that I want? 
I could create a getter. Vue.js actually allows me to create a getter object, just like I do mutations, actions, and then I could pull just the object that I want. But for the sake of time now, I'm just going to pull all of the decks into the deck component and then just find the one that I want. So in modern front end frameworks, there's something called lifecycle hooks. And I'm just going to use one here called mounted. And what this means is basically when this component mounts to the DOM, then I'm going to run this function. Now you'll notice this language is similar to react. Or you can do component did mount and all that stuff. It's just a little bit simplified in Vue. So here I need to create a variable that I'm going to create in a second. A deck variable and I'm going to set deck equal to this dot store dot state dot decks I have to decide which deck I want off of decks here so I'm going to do that first and I'm going to create a variable called deck ID this will equal this dot route dot params dot deck ID and I will pass that in here now actually in my router I have this set as ID so I'm gonna change this to ID and this will be able to pull that ID off of the route set it to the variable deck ID and then the deck ID is just the index of which deck in the dex array and whichever deck that is, I'm going to set that deck object to this.dex. So I need to create data here so I can have that variable. So let's do data. By the way, I'm using auto ESLint to correct my linting errors. So every time I save, that's why my code changes a little bit. So here I'm going to return an object again, and this will be deck. And I'll start that off as an empty object. And now I should have this deck available inside the component. Let me check. If I look in my Vue.js DevTools, I can see I'm on the deck page. And I do in fact have my deck object set here that was set in my mounted hook. So I have the correct object for the deck I'm looking at. deck dot name and now I have the deck information displaying what if I want to make this look like an actual study deck and put a card down here I'm just gonna mock this up so I'll create a div with a class of study card and add some styles here. Just to make it stand out. And here's my box. I added a few flex classes from Bootstrap to make this display a little bit more nicely. So this will be my card container and then I want to display study cards in here. I'm just going to dummy up some study cards here. So now I want to show these cards one at a time inside of the study card here. So how would I do that? I'm actually going to fold this and create another variable here. I'll call it current card and I'll start that at zero. Probably current index is better. So I will display the current card here, just the name of course. I'll do cards, current index, and then dot name and the card is showing up okay 
And how do I go to the next card then? So I can actually create a button here and I'll give it some styling from Bootstrap. So button and then BTN de default. So I have this button down here and I want this to take me to the next card. So what I needed to do is actually update this current index and increment it if I want to go to the next card. And view has a directive to handle events for that. And it's called v on colon and then the name of the event. Since it's a button, I want the user to click on the button. So I'm going to say on the click event or to listen for the click event on this button and then run this piece of JavaScript or function. So for starters, I'm going to say when they click on that button, I want to increment the current index. So I'm going to try out the button and now you can see that it actually changes to card two and three and pulls the correct card names as it increments. Another way to do this, and a more practical way if there was more logic in here, is to create a method. I'm going to create a method. I'm just going to call it increment. And down here, below data, I'm going to create this methods object. And I'm going to say increment is a method. And inside this method, I'm going to do this dot current index and here I'm going to do plus plus. Now you'll notice if I refer to current index in the template, I don't have to use this because the template handles that for me. I can use any variable without using this. But if I use that variable in my JavaScript, it won't be globally available. I have to get it from the this context. That's a common error in the JavaScript script tag to forget to use this with a variable. And if I click next, it works exactly the same way. There are many different types of events you can listen for, for click events, for key up events, and even for custom events. There's also something called event modifiers. For a key event, for example, you could listen for a specific key like an enter key. But I'm gonna use the click event here since I'm already using it. So what would be a modifier for a click event? That would be Maybe I just want to capture the left click or the right click. So I could do dot right. And now I'm at card one. And as many times as I click, it's not incrementing. But if I do a left click, of course, it opens my options as well. But it does increment the card because it's waiting for that left click. Excuse me, right click. It's waiting for a right click. So it increments on a right click. And view has a lot of these. If you need to use a prevent default, you can do dot prevent. If you need stop propagation, you can do dot stop. It's really convenient to have all of these event modifiers. One more thing that I'm going to go over is breaking apart this component and looking at props. So here I have this div, which is a card and I'm looping through it here, but what if I want this card in another component? This is a really common pattern to move this out into its own component. So just like I had the hello world component here, I'm going to create another component and call this deck card dot view. I'm going to use my snippet again, just to get started. And I'm going to take this out of here. So I'm going to get rid of this, come to my deck card. And actually, I'll get rid of this wrapping div as well. There's a few updates that I need to make. For one thing, I don't have this dex variable. This is just going to be a single card. I still want to do the loop in the dex.view file. So I'm going to get rid of this V4 and the key and just leave this as a static card. I will still need to pass in some data and I will do that in a second. And so how I use this component in the dex card here is I can import it. So I can import 
deck card from at. So at is an alias that view automatically gives me for the source folder. So it'll be source slash components slash deck card dot view. And then I need to register that component. Every component that I import, I do need to register as a component so I can use it in my template. And now it's complaining that I registered it, but I haven't used it. So I'm gonna use it in here. Deck card, and I'm gonna paste the same V4 that I used before. V4 deck and decks, I still need a key here because it is a for loop. I'm gonna make this a bit prettier. And that will loop through the cards the exact same way. The only thing is now that this is in a different component, I don't have access to deck anymore. I actually need to pass that into this component. So what I can do is use vbind again to pass in a variable because I want to pass in this deck variable so I can use it in deck card. And I'm going to call it deck. And then the variable I'm going to pass in is the same name, deck. And then I could pass in the index separately, but I actually already have it here as the key. Now, technically, this is the proper syntax for passing a prop down to a child component. So I should have access to this index on a key variable from props in the child component. But let's see if view lets us do that. And on this, I'm gonna say key. And you can do this a few different ways. So I could just say key is a number, or I can create an object here and say it's type number, and I can say required is true, and there are some other options I can do here. And then the other prop that I need to accept that I want to use in the child component is deck. So I'm going to say deck type is object required is true. So the only thing that won't work here right now is this I and I'm going to replace that with key here and I also need to replace this one with key but actually it doesn't really like that I'm use reusing the key object here and I'm getting some warnings in my terminal so I'm just going to pass in the actual index here as I change those back to I and that will be I with the same stipulations. If I go to view deck, if use the right deck, I can increment through the cards and navigate around the app. This is definitely the basics of view. There's much more you can do, especially with the store and the router. You'll notice I only used state here, but there are also mutations, actions, getters, and then you can break up your store into modules as it grows larger. And then for router, there are router guards and child routes and all sorts of things that you can do with routing here beyond just the basic routes. Hopefully just from this simple demonstration, you can kind of see the differences in Vue.js and why you might want to use it for your next front end application. Of course, I highly encourage you to check out the excellent view documentation and especially the part covering the V model directive, which is two way data binding you can use with form inputs, as we didn't talk about that in this video. If you have any questions about Vue.js, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at Faraday Academy or on Discord. You can join my free Discord server and I try to chat on there every single day. So if you have any questions about Vue or Python or just want to talk about coding, then I would love for you to join me there. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks to Shad for inviting me to do this collaboration with him. Have a great day, everyone. Another big thank you to Gwen for doing this video. 
I'd also like you to look at the video notes here. You can see the links to her information so you can get to see her channel and get more information just like you saw here. So thank you again, Gwen.